the 19 something or other Quickway SV valve resurfacing machine. Let's figure out how to use it. So I originally made another video where I got this thing and I unboxed it and I said it was, you know, from the 70s or something like that. Turns out this is way older than that. Um, maybe from the 50s, something like that. Maybe even earlier. I'm not sure. Uh, I tried to find some info on it. Could not figure it out. Anyway, this thing has a six ball chuck right there that holds the valve. You'll see that in a bit. But we can't check it without having valves. So I scored this old junk G-pad. It is some amount of liters and it has valves in it. That's all I know. <clears throat> um, from what the guy said, these Jeep engines of this particular year, whatever it is, I don't know, are garbage, but uh, it does have some valves in it. So we're going to pull a couple more valves out and give them a shot in this valve machine. Pretty excited. I've always wanted a valve machine, even though it's a little bit older. This is the horror show that we're going to use to take the valves out. This is actually too big for this head, really. You can't get in there with it. And uh, these are sketchy on the best days. So I did squish the jaws together a little bit there. And we're going to just try to get a couple of valves out. The deal is that you can press the spring up. You screw that thing down. It squishes, um, you know, the retainer inside these coil binders here, these little coil hooks. But you can see that these coils are so small that I can't actually compress compress it good enough with this machine to uh, fully compress the valve. So it's a little bit of a trick to get them out, but I'll show you how it's done. Better wear safety glasses when you're using one of these things, definitely. So you hook, uh, hook these little ears, back it off. Hook the ears as far down into the coils as you can get it. Squish them together and pray for your life. There we go. Get it in the center. You start tightening her up. So I'm already at coil bind, essentially, which kind of blows um, because I can't compress these far enough, compress the coils far enough. So a little magnet, a pick, uh, push down, and pray. Oh, the magic glove. So the glove underneath there helps keep the valve up. Man, I hate doing this. This. Yeah. There's one struggle. And there's two. Keepers are out. I need to get a real spring compressor. There we go. One spring. There you go. Actually, this one isn't stuck. There we go. So an exhaust. I have one intake over here already. Hopefully none of these are bent. I ended up getting three of the exhausts out and an intake. So I'm sure that we've got one good one. I don't know if these valves are sodium filled or not. I'm not entirely sure. I'd have to look it up. Not gonna. We're gonna play with the valve grinder. All right, well, a lot of you guys probably know more about this machine than I do. And if you do, let me know in the comments anything I got wrong. So I'll tell you what I think I know. Uh, this older style machine uses this ball detainer style chuck. 
right there, which has six ball bearings on these ramps. And as you pull this collar back, the ball bearings are allowed to expand, put your valve in it, and as you release it, it forces those balls back down to grip the stem of the valve. Now, later models, the SVS2 and some other ones, you know, different whatevers, um, they used a collet style, which would be similar to some one of these. This is just a standard R8 collet, 11 32nd. This is probably an 11 32nd uh, spring collet, ER32. This is what a mill would use, uh, something like that. Uh, they'll have different size holes in it and you would size whatever collet size, you know, the hole inside diameter there to whatever the valve stem size is, and then they'll kind of crunch down on it and, uh, and grip the valve that way. So as you would tighten the collar, it would force these little tabs down and it would squish the valve stem. So most of you guys already probably know that. Some of you guys might not, though. Um, from what I was reading, a bunch of people were complaining about these um, collet styles, this one here, having like a, a total indicated run out of like around 4,000, you know, something like that, which isn't great. It's, it's not good at all um, on this. The new ones are really super tight tolerance. But when I measured this, uh, it might be in that other video. I'm not sure. When I first got this thing, I measured a tolerance of about 1,000. All right. So I ordered some new ball ball bearings these which is that's all that they are it's just standard ball bearings for this chuck um according to quickway those those bearings those balls in there ugh, are are consumable items so you would buy new balls when your other one got wore out so if you're slamming valves in it right and left and you, you ding up these balls it could get like a, a burr on it or a dent and that could throw off you know, the the alignment, I guess, of the valve in there and can make, you know, make it run untrue. So this one, whatever, I ordered some new balls for it. Uh, whoever was using this last ground a crazy shoulder on this wheel. Now these things are supposed to be flooded with coolant. So it's a flood style system. This entire basin here is filled with a cutting fluid and it gets pumped through the machine and runs out through these little drippers on there. And that keeps the dust down. You can see a bunch of the crap there. It's probably on the other video too. I scraped a lot of the paint off that was really flaking a lot to try to save it from going into the pump. You can see a ton of it down there. Uh, it's not clean yet, but I do need to make sure that that chuck is accurate enough to cut valves before I invest a bunch of time and effort into this machine. So that's the deal. Now I did pull these valves out with you. We're gonna go ahead and throw these things in in a little bit. I'm waiting on the McMaster car shipment for some other stuff. The balls for that, a bunch of screws to fix the Dodge. You haven't seen this video yet. The, it's crazy. <laughs> It stranded me, so that's that's kind of where I'm going to leave that until I can figure out what's going on with it more. Won't start. Uh, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and kind of go on this. Now, over here, we've got this little valve tip dresser right there. So you put your valve in here, sit it on the little way, clamp it down. I'm not left-handed. There we go, clamp it down. Push it in there, and then you can dress this valve on this stone. Again, it needs to be flooded with coolant. Now, um, you're supposed to have a special fluid for this, special cutting fluid. I'm just going to go down here and use some ATF that I pulled out of the Dodge. So this is fresh, basically brand new ATF. This is kind of a strange way to look at the machine because this is actually the back of it. So you're supposed to stand in the front and kind of look over you know, but uh, pretty sure that this is, oh, we're going to find out. It's going to fill her up. I guess we're going to find out if there are any fractures in, um, in the casting. So this is a drain, or this is the, the fill port. So it separates out 
uh, you know, all of the, the crap and it overflows into that port right there where you see and drains it out or it cycles it through. So once we turn it on, um, we might have to add some to it. This side here, I don't know, can you see it in the frame? This side right here also has a drain port that when the coolant here runs in there, it then pours back into this side. Some of these have a um, removable diamond tip. This one does not have a removable diamond tip. So, eh, bummer, but it is what it is. All right. There we go. So we're just gonna turn this on for now and see if it pumps. Is it even plugged in? Yeah, let's see what's up. Hopefully nothing bad happens. Fingers crossed. Here we go. Now we're coming out. So both sides are dripping. Let's throw a valve in it and see how that goes. This actually needs to be cleaned up. Wire wheel that. On a side note, my balls showed up. <laughs> Insert joke here. Here are the, it's, they were 1732nd hardened heavy duty ball bearings. So six of them go inside of this collar. All right, so this side's running pretty good. That's pouring out quite a bit. This side, not so much. Oh, there we go. See all the dust? There we go, one more. All right, let's stick a valve in it. So we've got a little bit of kind of pitting and grossness on the valve, but otherwise it looks pretty good. Shaft is clean, stem rather, so we're good. Just did a quick little clean job on it. All right, so without looking up online, I don't even remember what engine this thing is. Uh, it's kind of a rough calculation. 45 degrees is what I'm going to go with, which is, you know, typical type stuff. So if we go to 45, we're pretty much right on it. So we're going to set this up for 45 degrees. All right, so you do that over here on the front of the machine. This is like all the light. I've got every light in the entire shop on right now. So there's 45 right there. There's the marker for zero. So we're on 45. So now the angle should be set for the valve and we're good. All right, so this wheel right here moves this entire thing in and out. So Crank it in. All 
All right, well, give it a shot. Well, now we're getting some coolant. too shabby um it needs a little tuning up for sure so there we go pretty nice a nice valve job got lots and lots and lots of meat on the side there i mean you could do like another angle different things but look at that that's a nice valve all right i think i got the base set up good enough that thing is like the worst base you could ever have the misfortune of ever owning, but it's what I got. Basically within a thou on that. I can't choke up on it anymore because as I said, there's there's three balls here and there's three balls in the back there, so I can't I can't grab it too far out and measure the super machine shank of it. That's what we got right on the edge. About a thou and a half. Something like that. Again, we're not, t this, none of this is actual measurement. It's just we're trying to see how worn out the chuck is because that's the most important thing on this is that chuck. If the chuck is wobbling around, your valve won't seat, and that's no bueno. So that's it. So I think, yeah, replace these balls here, um, clean the chuck. There's probably grit and stuff back inside of this collar. I'm sure that that's exactly what's happened. When you get grit down inside of it, it wears those ways. So we'll just have to see, you know, how bad those ways are. I'll do a little tuning up on it, and uh, we'll come back and see exactly uh, how much this stuff changes it. So there you go. The uh, Quickway SV Supermatic Valve Resurfacing Machine. I think that's its full name. It's pretty cool. I really like older machines. It's, it's neat to look at something like this and see how far everything has come. Jay has an SVS2, and it's a pretty awesome machine. Uh, there are parts available for this, so if I ever wanted to change the chuck out and get something different, you know, there are ways to kind of improve on this one. It's, it's still cool. At least I know that it works and the fluid or the coolant, you know, works properly and, you know, whatever. So all of the little tiny things will just work through as we go. So we'll just get parts and rebuild stuff. But we have a valve resurfacer. So, you know, I'm not sure that I would necessarily trust it on a hot rod, obviously. But uh, for like little tiny small engines and stuff, I'm sure it's going to work fine. And then we'll just improve on it as we go along. So in case you've never watched or seen... Uh, valve resurfacing machine. I guess you still haven't really seen a good one, but uh, that's that's how they work, and that's how you surface valves. I, I didn't show you the other stuff yet, like how the there's a rocker arm attachment for cleaning up rocker arms stuff that would go on the back. I don't know if this one's got it. I think it's a whole different attachment, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, the reason I didn't show you how this stuff works, 
It's because I don't know how it works. <laughs> I've never done it. I've never had to. So I'll read in the manuals and figure it all out. But until next time, I appreciate it. And check me out over at Instagram on Half Ass Garage over there. And uh, I don't know what project's coming up next. I've got the parts in for the Dodge today from McMaster Car. So I'm sure we're going to start on that soon. But thanks a lot for watching, and I'll catch you next time.